and I tend to be loud, and I also tend to talk really fast, so I'm sorry. The trade-off is you get to stare at my amazing sweater vest all day, so I'm really <laughs> doubly excited about that one. Slideshow. So my name is Angela Ocaña. I work for the Santa Clara City Library. And I am really excited to be here today because when they said you should come speak at, feature, at Futures, I said, oh, okay, what do you want me to talk about? And they're like, inappropriateness. And I said, yes, inappropriateness and librarians, where, please sign me up, what are we gonna do? So I was like, okay, well, I guess I can talk to you today about gambling, about booze, about parties, and then I'm gonna be really naughty and talk to you about how to do it in your library. So. This is, um, you know, I was in this interview and they asked me this question. They said, how do you reach out to the 20 to 30 demographic? One, why do we interview? That's a terrible question. Unnamed library never asked that question in an interview because it's such a big thing. I mean, we have this whole futures thing about 20 to 30 year olds and you're gonna spring that on me in an interview. What am I gonna do? And so I was like sweaty, wiping palms all over my body and I was like, oh, I know, um, let me think about it. And then I realized, you know what? I've, I've actually, I've done that before. And so the story that I began to tell them is the same story that I'm going to tell you. It started with this grant. So before I was like this super fabulous, amazing librarian, I was a super fancy, really amazing grant coordinator for our library system. And I had run other people's grants and I was taking this class from Patricia Wong at San Jose State and it was about grant writing. So the, the first thing you do is you look at your community. What do you need? What do you, you need to, what's the community need? And I said, well, you know, we have a great jobs program. We have great kids programs. We're starting these STEM programs, and, and San Francisco has this like whole sustainability thing, and I was like, that's what we don't have. We're like really into ma like making bread and making jam and doing all these really cool things, but there's no hub for it. So I said, you know what would be a really cool place to like make pickles? The library. <laughs> and everyone was like, that's a great idea. We should make pickles at the library. You should get this grant. We should make pickles at the library. And I said, yes. And so what I wanted to do is I wanted to get dirty. So all these programs, I was like, we're not having someone come in and speak. You know what we're gonna do? I'm gonna put your hands in some dough, I'm gonna put your hands on a chicken, I want you to touch out some bees, very gently touch some bees, and I want you to like, learn. And, and we have this problem, I think, as libraries is, we're gonna talk at you. I'm gonna talk at you about things, and then you go home and maybe you'll do it. And I said, no, we are gonna learn, and we are gonna get dirty. So the, it, was super successful. People came, people came in their 20s. Um, so I was like, oh, I'm so awesome. And you know, we did this one program. I say that a lot, please enjoy. Um, we did this one program, and it was one of the only ones where we were talking at you. And we were doing beer brewing. And I was like, okay, this is awesome. And my speaker was super flaky. You guys never had an issue with that, I'm sure. And um, our speaker was like, okay, you know, we didn't know if we were having it or not. He wouldn't respond to emails. Like three days before, he's like, okay, it's gonna be an eight hour event and I'm gonna bring this brew kettle and we're gonna brew beer. And I was like, no, <laughs> it'll be an hour because you didn't get back to us and you're just gonna talk. And it wasn't brewing beer, it was a brew kettle requires fire. And they don't let me have fire because I've like broken some stuff and ruined some carpet and blown out every circuit in my library. So they're like, no, too short of a time frame. But what I realized, we held this beer brewing course and half of the people who came were from this little website called Meetup. And I was like, anybody here at Meetup, right? Yeah. And I was like, this is awesome. I'm gonna go to Meetup and I'm gonna start pimping library programs because this is the audience I want. And so I go on and I'm like, I'm a library, I'm awesome. And they're like, we don't want you here. And I said, what? <laughs> but I'm really great, I have free stuff, it's really cool, it meets your demographics. They're like, no, this is people to people. Not like library programs and then you poach our people. And I was like, but I wanna poach your people. I have really great programs. And so it didn't work out, but I always kept in mind this idea of meetup and the things that they could do. By the way, you'll notice this woman's shirt says, I drink coffee, I drink whiskey. On a scale of one to America, how free are you tonight? And would you like to come to a party? 
So I work at this branch. You've met my boss. She's a little crazy. Her name is Cheryl. And she said, we're going to have an 80s prom. And everyone's going to dress up. And we're going to be really excited. And I have all these meetup groups. And I was like, meetup, you don't say. And it's going to be a great time. It's going to be after hours. And we're like, yes. And they came back. And the meetup group said, no, we don't want to come. You don't have booze. And we said, we'll get booze. Come, we'll get booze. And so we reached out to our friends group and we said, you have booze, come. And they said, yes, we will come and we will make money because we'll sell drinks for $5 and it's a donation, it goes to the library. And we said, yes, this is amazing. And we rocked out the night. We had 110 people that came. It was after hours, they were 20 to 30 years old. And I was like, we've succeeded. They were 21. They were all 21. I wasn't even 21. <laughs> so we're writing this super high. We're like, we're awesome. And we, uh, we sat in this planning meeting. And we had started to theme things out. So August was like hot August arts, and September was cooking, and October came up, and I was like, Oktoberfest. Yes! This is what my life has been building up to. This is the highlight of my day. We're going to do Oktoberfest. And we're like, yes, and then we high-fived, and we were like really excited. We're like, we're gonna do booze programs, and 20-year-olds will come, and we will take over the library world. And we said, yes, and I did this like, I'm gonna go run over to my desk and start sending emails. Her desk is like two feet away, so it was a really short run. It's the most exercise I'd gotten that week. So I went to my desk, and I started typing this email, and I was like, who am I gonna send this to? Who do I want to come? And I was like, you know what I like drinking? I like drinking vodka. And I like drinking whiskey. And you know who sells some good stuff? St. George Spirits in Alameda. Yes. And I typed up this email, and I was really excited because I'm writing this high. And I said, dear St. George, my name is Angela. I'm a librarian. Please come to my library. P.S. Bring booze. <laughs> and I'm a teen librarian, too, so I should mention that. And I went, and I sit in the teen room for two hours a day, and I sat, and I came back. And St. George responded. We would love to come to your library. L-O-V-E, capital letters. And I was like, yes. And they were like, we'll bring booze. Just talk to your nonprofit friends group and it'll be like a thing in a fundraiser and we'll give you money. And I was like, yes. And I did this dance. <laughs> and I jigged my way into my boss's office and I said, I am wonderful. St. George Spirits is coming and they're coming for free and it's gonna be great because we're gonna do a tasting and then we're gonna do, I do this a lot. I said, we're going to do a cocktail hour afterwards, and it's going to be wonderful because 20-year-olds and 30-year-olds and 40-year-olds and 60-year-olds, everyone will enjoy. This will be great. I said, please tell the friends, this is the day I want to do it. And she said, yes. And I said, yes. And we high-fived again because we're really into high-fiving. And she came back to me the next day, and she said, I talked to the friends, and I was like, yes. And she said, they don't want to do it. And I said, no. I said, my dreams, all of the things, all of the things I wanted to do, all of the things I wanted to accomplish. And I said, why? Why would they say such a thing? Friends groups are supportive. Friends groups are supportive. They want to help me. She said, no, you know, they're really worried about liability. You know, they, they don't want these small, they don't think they're going to generate enough income from it. And I was like, no, but they're supporting the library. And they came to prom, and they were really great. She's like, yeah, you're not going to convince them. The board has ruled against you. I was really sad. I was like, well, this has been very fun. And so I was writing this thing for Futures, which was more embarrassing, because I wrote the first part of Futures when I was really excited. And then I was like, now I got to go to Futures and sit next to the Friends Library lady who let her group do, do alcohol. <laughs> and that wasn't a slip up. And I was like really sad, because I was going to be this total failure talking at Futures about how I didn't get alcohol to my alcohol-related program. So then I'm like, wait, I just need a nonprofit group. They'll sign my ABC license. I'll trick some poor, unsuspecting nonprofit group to come to the library. And so I went to our speech and debate teacher, speech and debate teacher. And I said, you have a nonprofit board. Please go to the mothers of your board and tell them that we should have alcohol at the library. This is a great idea. Surprisingly, they said no. And I was crushed again. This is just a story of my dreams falling apart. <laughs> so at the same time, we'd been working on this program. Anybody read Roller Girl by Victoria Jameson? Someone, one person raised their hands. Good job, librarians. 
it's really awesome. It's a graphic novel. Yes. And we, we're going to have this program. You know, we don't just do book talks. We do like book talks with a twist. So it's about this girl who joins roller derby, and it's really empowering. It's about a young girl. And I was like, you know what we should do? We should definitely bring our local roller girls. My boss and I were like, yeah, but we should also do a roller derby in the parking lot. And we were like, yes, we are awesome. We can't have alcohol, but we're awesome. So I was sitting there, and I realized Silicon Valley Roller Girls is a nonprofit group. <laughs> Silicon Valley Roller Girls are 20 to 30 year olds with tattoos <laughs> that support young girls and empowering things. <sighs> but I've been turned down so long. So I shot this email to Documental. She signs all her emails mental. So it's like the best correspondence. My roller derby name is Book Life, in case you're interested. So I was like, dear mental, this is Book Life. You know, hey, here's this thing. I wanna, I wanna do this series of four alcohol-related programs. St. George Spirits. I wanna do a whiskey tasting. I want to do a 1920s murder mystery bash after hours. I want to do a wine and paint night for our adult only arts ladies club. <sighs> it's like this much money. What do you think? I mean, you would keep all the money. And she responded. And she said, yes. And I did the dance of a thousand dances. And I screamed at my desk. This nice man with his five. <laughs> I acknowledge you, sir. And then I, <laughs> and then I ignore you. <laughs> I am telling a story of booze. So then I got really excited because I was like, yes. And this is the screen that I prepared where I was really sad. And I was like, where do we go? Because here's the thing about libraries. You know where 20 to 30 year olds don't want to go on a Friday night? They don't want to go to the library. And it's just a real sad truth of what we do. How do I get them to come to the library at a nighttime program, especially if they don't have kids? How do you get single, ready to mingle people to come? And how do you get them to think about the library as a place that isn't just books? Because that's what we struggle with, and that's what we fight, is this misconception that we're boring places. And that's not true. We're like this really great hub for the community. We're a place where people can go, and they can hang out. And guess what? At my library, you can drink. <laughs> so the thing is, my friend's group wasn't super supportive. But you know who was my library director? And she's in the audience, and I'm not kissing her butt, but she was super supportive. Um, of course, I always pitch these ideas. I go in with like a bottle of red wine and a cheese plate, and I said, let's talk about a program. <laughs> and surprisingly, she's always really amenable. So, and you know, my direct boss, Cheryl, was like, these, these are really great programs. This is what we need in the library. And so I had this really great support structure, but I didn't have any way to make it happen, and it was through all these other partnerships that it happened. And there's this really miscon big misconception. Alcohol is naughty. Now, if you've never drank before, maybe that's an opinion. But a lot of us drink, and a lot of us don't want to go out to a loud bar. But maybe we do want to hang out in a creative atmosphere. And maybe we do want to sip on a cocktail. So even though that's OK for us personally, people don't want that at their libraries. Because it's, it's naughty. And it's not, it's really exciting. So the Silicon Valley Roller Girls were so excited to come. They were so excited that they've had more volunteers for this event than some of their other nonprofit events. So I think I have like 30 Roller Girls who are like, we're gonna help a lot, don't worry about it. I was like, yes, at least you're coming. And they said, we're so excited to partner with you. These are the wine, these are the, actually the cocktail glasses they made for the St. George event. The leaf is my library logo. Silicon Valley Roller Girls, they didn't, they said, hey, we're making glasses, we're gonna sell them at the event. It all goes to the nonprofit, do you want your logo on it? <laughs> Duh. <laughs> and I called some people up and I said, these glasses are awesome. And they said, but do we wanna be associated with alcohol? And I said, yes, these are amazing. And we have an art and wine festival this week. Why, the city's logo is slapped all over wine glasses. Ah, what's, what's your problem? And so they were these enthusiastic partners. And I was like, this is great. We're really awesome. So it's kind of this idea that we can break out of this mold. That if you persevere hard enough, if you're really excited, if you decide that you're going to stumble, I think the title of my program was like hipsters, hurdles, all that kind of stuff. If you want to bring gambling, I started this year a fantasy football program. 
It's considered gambling, right? People aren't putting money down, but they're winning a prize, they're being competitive. Booze, alcohol programs, parties, 80s prom, murder mystery, all these sinful things. It's like, it's up to us as librarians to kind of break this mold and say, our libraries can be whatever we want because we think we're reaching a need. My program is next Tuesday, by the way, if you want to come, it's next Tuesday, register on eventbrite.com. I have 76 people signed up. I have a meetup group with 35 people on it, and we haven't even media blitzed it yet. That was just word of mouth. So look at these, look at hurdles. One, I'm really happy that I didn't like, have to give the worst presentation next to a super supportive friends group. But also, look at them and think about what you can do and think about this demographic in a brand new way. That's it.